What's up guys, this video is going to be centered around Young Kiv's Madden Ultimate League season that resulted in him earning a spot in the final four of the Madden Bowl. Throughout the regular season, he averaged 27.2 points per game, good for not only first in the Elite Conference, but also tops in the entire league. Defensively, he was able to hold his opponents to 21.4 points per game, placing him fourth in the Elite Conference and ninth overall in a tie with Drini. This performance resulted in him finishing with a 7-3 record and being the number one seed heading into the Elite Conference playoffs. Now, Playbook-wise, he rolled out the West Coast book on the offensive side of the ball with his famous Gun Bunch Week scheme, while on defense opted to use the New England Patriots playbook. Taking a look at his offensive stats, Kiv ran 240 total offensive plays that we could see on stream with 24, exactly 10% of them, being unique play calls. Granted, this number does not account for the multiple different ways a single play can be set up, just the name of the play. Now you can see his top 5 play calls here, as Corner Strike was by far his most called play on stream, accounting for over a quarter of his play calls. In his top 5, you see the quartet that makes the West Coast Gun Bunch just so powerful in Corner Strike, PA Post, Mesh Post, and Dig Halfback Out. With over 82% of his offensive plays and almost 95% of his offensive yardage coming from Gun Bunch, you can see how powerful this scheme is this year in Madden. He actually averaged over 10 yards a play on three different passing plays with an insane 21.25 yards per play for Mesh leading the way. Here you can see a list of every offensive play that Kiv called on stream throughout the regular season. All of this resulted in him going 91 for 123 for over 1300 yards, 12 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, and a fantastic passer rating of 124.51. On the ground, he was much more modest, but respectable enough that his opponents couldn't completely disregard it, rushing 83 times for 338 yards and 11 touchdowns. He ultimately ended up with 1,443 total yards on stream while averaging just over 6 yards per play. That number is not particularly high in terms of Madden standards, lending reason to the point that this gun bunch offense isn't super explosive, it's just built around consistently taking what the defense gives you, and when in the hands of someone who rarely makes mistakes, it can be incredibly difficult to slow down. Kiv rushed the ball on just 34.58% of his attempts, a number that makes him one of the more pass-heavy players in the league, and much more so than the two previous Final Four representatives we talked about earlier, Andrini and Trueboy. Something I noticed over the course of the season was how much success Kiv had against dollar defenses. Against the dollar, Kiv ended up going 23 of 27 through the air for 333 yards, 4 touchdowns, 0 interceptions, and a near perfect passer rating. Now this could be particularly important if he were to face Drini in the finals, as that is the defense he has been running throughout the year. Another thing to note is whether or not Blocky, who he has to play in the semis, will switch from Nickel 335 after the nerfs, and if so, what he will be switching to. On the defensive side of the ball, he heavily leaned on the popular linebacker cross 3 show 2 from the Nickel 335 odd formation that is exclusively in the Patriots playbook. He called this play over 150 times on stream, only allowing 4.87 yards per play while racking up an insane 24 sacks and 10 interceptions. For the entire season, he allowed 6.23 yards per carry while piling up 25 sacks and 15 total interceptions. For context, nearly 30% of his opponent's dropbacks on stream throughout the regular season ended up in either them getting sacked or throwing an interception. Here's the list of plays that Kiv called defensively throughout the regular season that we could see. Once in the playoffs, Kiv was able to prevail over Stevie J by a score of 47-30. to Kiv's special teams proved to be the MVP of this one, as it was a neck and neck game until the fourth quarter where he was able to force and recover back-to-back -back fumbles on kickoffs. Now he was still himself on the offensive side of the ball, however, going 12 of 15 for 216 yards and two touchdowns while also performing above average on the ground where he rushed 13 times for 93 yards and three touchdowns. Defensively, he was having trouble stopping Stevie as his tight slots offensive approach forced Kiv out of his comfort zone in the nickel 335 odd and into a 3-4 odd cover two sink look. It honestly looked like a matchup where the last person to have the ball was going to win the game until the huge special teams plays by Kiv. Let's take a look at this sequence of plays against Stevie J in the playoffs that makes Kiv so tough to stop. After a first down sack, Kiv goes to PA post as Stevie tries to send a 3 deep blitz from 3-4 even. 
Ascending pressure while also having three deep defenders makes your underneath defenders, especially on the sideline, vulnerable to getting high load if the pressure does not get there in time. Kiv reads the hard flat defender and throws the corner out for a gain of 18. One play later, Stevie goes with a similar concept on defense while Kiv now goes with mesh post and uses Stevie's user defender as the high low read. Stevie stays underneath aggressively on the drags as Kiv makes the perfect read and throws the post route right behind him. Next play, and Stevie switches to his famous OLB strike 2 defense. At the snap, he shoots to the left anticipating a route to break from the bunch, but it never happens. This time, Kiv went with deep attack and hits the backside post as he gets inside leverage on the flat defender and Stevie's middle linebacker, who he put into a deep third to avoid getting beat deep, bails too far back to make a play on the ball. Now for the final play of this sequence, Stevie goes with the same OLB strike 2 concept, but this time, since he doesn't have to worry about getting beat deep because of the field positioning, he opts to man up his linebacker onto the outside bunch receiver, who is generally one of the primary options who runs crossing routes over the middle of the field. In this case, Kiv goes with PA post, streaking Bo Jackson in the process. But because Stevie felt secure over the deep middle and didn't drop his linebacker back, he works his way open in the seam for a 16-yard touchdown. Now, this sequence of plays just highlights that it's not only the play calling for Kiv, but that he almost always makes the right read no matter what coverage you throw at him. I hope you enjoyed this rundown on Kiv's journey throughout the Ultimate League. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you would like to see more tips and competitive breakdowns in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, and until next time, take it easy.